Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Wild Yoga Tribe podcast. I'm your host, Lily Allen Duenas. Together, we'll talk about the world of yoga and we'll talk to people from around the world. Join us for authentic conversations about the global yoga ecosystem, and we'll cover yoga philosophies and methodologies along the way. Inhale, exhale. We're about to dive in. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode seven of the Wild Yoga Tribe podcast. Today I am joined with a wonderful friend, Almudena Laborda Galindo. She's from Spain, and I um, met her at Punya Yoga. We actually, it's crazy. I don't think we've ever actually met face to face, but I feel like I know her so well. I say she's my friend. She she feels like a friend because she works very in close contact with Punya Yoga, and we both consider that one of our homes in Rishikesh. So I'm really honored that she took some time to join me today for this episode. So to give a little bit of background on Almudena, she is a yoga teacher from Spain, as I said. She first began her yoga journey in 2016. She quit her job and traveled the world. And it was in her first stop or her stop in India where she did her yoga teacher training. She didn't have any intention actually of becoming a yoga teacher, but she just wanted to go deeper into the philosophy and into the way of living in the yogic tradition. But from the moment she put one step in India, it has become a second home for her. And I can definitely relate to that. So I'm really excited for our conversation today. I have a feeling it will be awesome. So thank you so much, Almudena, for joining me today. Hello, Lily. Thank you so much for thinking of me as a yoga teacher in Spain. So it's a honor and I'm very, very, very happy to be here today with you. Actually, yes, we haven't met in person, and uh, I also feel like uh, we we know each other, like a f- close friend. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. So I would like to ask, I, I hinted in your bio about how you first got started in yoga, but could you share a little bit more about what drew you to yoga? What actually made you want to try yoga for the first time? Yes, yeah, sure, definitely. Uh, like you said, it was in 2016. Uh, I was. Uh, it was in Murcia, in my hometown in south of Spain. Uh, and I was having a kind of uncertain time in my life in terms of career. As uh, you said, uh, that year I quit my job to travel and to experience uh, new things around the world. So I heard uh, about yoga and uh, the the feeling that you can get after class uh, to calm your mind, relax, and not much interested in the physical aspect, but just to uh, settle my mind a little bit. And actually, it was like this. Uh, my first class, uh, uh, it was a little, uh, uh, not a kind of embarrassed because uh, I had pain uh, in uh, in every asana, in every post that we were performing. And um, the woman next to me, like 50 years old, she was doing everything with a lot of flexibility. But uh, uh, I didn't want to quit this because at the end of the class, on the way back home, I was having this feeling like a flying, you know, like my mind was calm, all the stress that I was carrying uh, before the class. Uh, it went so uh, that uh, feeling it uh, helped me to uh, keep with this practice. And uh, as I said uh, that year, I started my my gap year to do, to travel around the world, and I experienced yoga in every country, in every country, little like uh, in Bali, in Indonesia, in Africa, in a uh, few few countries. I was doing. Uh, Taking, not picking some uh, yoga uh, experience from uh, many, many teachers and many, many different places. So, like this, this was my beginning in, in this journey. Wow, I didn't actually realize that your beginning of yoga was an international beginning. That it sounds like you just took a couple classes in Spain. Was it for just a few months and then going abroad? Yes, yes, it was like this. The beginning in Spain was very shortly, and uh, I kept doing it uh, during my my trips and my travels around the world. So 
Uh, yeah, it was a nice experience. I was taking classes in English with a foreigner teacher, foreigner uh, uh, classmates there around and meeting a lot of people. It was very, very, very nice. Oh, that's wonderful. And I love when I'm teaching abroad, when a new student who is really new to yoga or has never tried yoga comes to one of my classes, I always get really excited that I get to be a person to introduce them to the practice. So do you get that feeling too? Because I know you teach in other countries as well, like you're living in India right now. So uh, I know, of course, with COVID, Almudena, that you know we don't have so many students in person. Uh, but before COVID, were you noticing that too, that when new students would come to your class, you would feel this extra surge of excitement? Yeah, definitely. I think it's uh, both direction. As you said, uh, when you are a student uh, for your first classes, uh, you also, you never forget the these uh, teachers, those who are uh, giving you um, part of their uh, knowledge in, uh, in asana practice or in uh, meditation or uh, uh, in their personal life, how yoga uh, impacts in their life, and they share all this to you. I think when you are in the other side, when you teach and uh, to new students who are starting also in this practice, um, the energy that we share, that we uh, uh, exchange is mutual. I think uh, for them it's a, a kind of a um, nice experience, but for the teacher it's also very regarding, no, to have this uh, this uh, relationship with uh, with the students. So, yeah, now it's true that with the pandemic, it's not uh, very easy to do it in person. Online is now the the new way, but uh, although it's not my favorite way, but still, still we can manage, and uh, uh, it's creating also very very nice uh, things in in this uh, practice. So Almudena, you do a lot of yoga retreats or you, you host them and hold um, retreats in India um, with students from around the world or from Spain. Um, can you tell our listeners a little bit more about your yoga retreats or, or what they're like? Because I think maybe a lot of people haven't gone on a yoga retreat and wonder what actually happens. Yeah, actually, I I started doing uh, yoga retreats in in India directly abroad, no, in uh, Kerala and uh, Rishikesh. Uh, it was a, a big uh, challenge, no, because uh, hosting a retreat is uh, in a different country. You have to manage many things in a different culture. But after leaving uh, yoga here and learning everything from the root, from the land of yoga, I thought that it, uh, everyone should have uh, also this experience. So I directly went uh, for this kind of retreats in, in India to to give the, to offer my my students and everyone that uh, would like to come to have this this kind of uh, retreats, no, uh, not only uh, to know about uh, more asana, but uh, I think the philosophical and spiritual part uh, from the from my teacher or gurus, or uh, it could be a a, a great uh, a great experience for all of them, and also immersed in the culture of India, the food, the yogic lifestyle. I think it's easier if you are in the country. But uh, yeah, after doing retreats here in India, um, people who cannot come also uh, all the way here, we started doing in, in Spain, uh, in the south of Spain, Almeria, we, uh, co-hosting with a, a yoga teacher that are also very close to me. And uh, so it's uh, at the end, uh, the, the energy, the feeling, the, the vibes, uh, uh, among all the people in the group, it's it's amazing what you created in, in this kind of yoga holidays because it's uh, not so intense as a TTC, but uh, we wanted like maybe in India for one week, 10 days to have this experience of uh, what a student feel in a, in a TTC, but in 10 days. So it's uh, this kind of uh, uh, situation or experience where you share with many people, uh, all of them uh, willing to know more about uh, yoga and uh, all of them serving the same uh, 
willing to learn the same things and serving, and, and they have the common things about uh, what they want to um, learn in life about themselves, uh, you know, like serving uh, all these things, which is a little difficult, you know, in Western countries or with Western people to find uh, uh, similarities in this, uh, in this uh, lifestyle. And as you said, what I think is so special about doing a yoga retreat or a yoga teacher training course as well, or or any continuing education, is that the people you are surrounded with are are so beautiful and have such great intentions, and they're drawn to the same type of experience that you are. So you'll have kind of this deeper connection, and it certainly is something that doesn't end the minute the course or the retreat is over. It's something that continues on. It's a beautiful um, community or a a space to form that community. Yes, definitely is what you are saying. At the end, it doesn't end only in these retreats. The relationship, the we we always say that we like to create a, a family among all of us, among all the students that uh, come to our retreats or uh, teacher trainings. Uh, Mm, we want to create this uh, relationship that uh, can keep a uh, long life, no? Like uh, anything they need, we are here. Or uh, even um, any uh, extra course, online course or workshop that we are uh, offering, they are always willing to uh, join and uh, learn more and more. So it's what you said, we, we like to create, we want to create this uh, uh, family. So you have said that you run some yoga retreats in Spain as well as in uh, Kerala and Rishikesh. I, I would love to hear a little bit more about what yoga in Spain is like. Is it popular? Do a lot of people practice yoga or is it only in big cities? I, I would love to hear more about yoga in Spain. Well, yoga in Spain is quite, quite popular it was before uh, the pandemic started, but I think like uh, maybe everywhere with this pandemic, when everything has started, uh, people uh, uh, joined uh, online to these kind of classes, meditation, pranayama, uh, even with uh, all the family members with kids. So it's uh, now that online is uh, still there, uh, yoga is becoming more and more popular in Spain and I think everywhere uh, it's uh, it's uh, like this so yeah there uh, you can find many many kind of uh, of classes but uh, I would say that uh, it's mainly focused on this uh, uh, asana practice and uh, maybe a little bit of meditation but uh, as I feel it's true that I've not been in in Spain for long time but uh, I feel even from here in social media that uh, all these uh, people or co- yoga community that we follow uh, it's um, mostly focused on this uh, physical part so for me it's uh, it's uh, becoming popular but also um, how do I say they are not showing the 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 true essence of uh, of yoga or at least what uh, what we learn in from here from india so but i hope i hope that uh, maybe slowly slowly people would like to know deeper uh, about the the real uh, philosophy of yoga and they in they can start uh, being interested in uh, coming also to india and and learn all these things so so that they can uh, explore what is uh, the real yoga, it's real meaning. Ooh, uh, that was great because I think that an, a lot of the questions that would be coming up if someone heard you say that is, well, what is the real essence of yoga or what is, what's missing um, in terms of the philosophies or the the tradition? Because I, I do agree with you, Almudena, that it's the asana practice that's the most popular um, across the world and that we see maybe every single day an asana on Instagram or a social media site. It's really what is being presented to us constantly as the, um, as the signature of yoga is the asana is what I think 
the media and the global community is kind of showing to the public. But w- what do you think is the essence of yoga and what's missing uh, from how the media is portraying it? Yeah, it's like, I think it's maybe, as you said, the m- most uh, visible part, no, is to make uh, yoga very uh, uh, attractive, the asana or uh, the postures. And we cannot deny this is also part of yoga, but it's not everything in yoga. And uh, it's huge, it's huge, the, the, the knowledge and all the what uh, yoga what is uh, yoga about, no? But, uh, yeah, I think only those who, as I said, who has traveled to the root of this practice, to India, to this land, can um, be able to share in in their class, to their students, all these uh, uh, aspects, no, of uh, chanting uh, mantra in the opening of the class, or the importance also of uh, pranayama, or uh, I don't know, like uh, different different uh, parts that a yoga class in in its structure should have. And yeah, if you don't transmit also the philosophical and spiritual part in a class, at least is my my point of view. I also try to do in in my class when I was in Spain. Uh, students are missing are missing uh, the the true essence of of yoga. At the end, what yoga what we should uh, seek in yoga is uh, those kind of inquiries or questions like uh, who uh, am I? Uh, what is my purpose in this life? Uh, these kind of things. You no, know, at the end is to know ourselves. It's uh, in uh, maybe in a, in the Western society uh, the the lifestyle that they are carrying there. It's uh, they don't uh, have time to stop and uh, have these kind of questions. So if the yoga teacher uh, in their class at least fifty minutes or sixty minutes, they don't give the students the chance to think and to go deeper uh, in their. Uh, in their personal growth or spiritual growth, then for me it's just uh, like Pilates or something like this or another extra activity in the gym, which actually I don't like at all. <laughs> so yeah, I feel it's kind of a, uh, I feel hurt when uh, when they do this kind of uh, things in, for yoga. So also Patanjali said uh, in uh, in yoga in, we have to start with a physical body, with the body, and then we we have to transcend uh, to different levels until reach until we reach the meditation of samadhi. So it's good to start with this, but uh, the teacher should then al- should also um, provide different uh, different tools uh, to students to to reach the the meditation or the the self realization of each student. Yeah, it is the job of the teacher to provide the tools for the spiritual and personal growth and the awakening. I think that um, a comment that I got from a a yoga student um, in one of my classes in Bali a long time ago was, I've never heard someone talk like you talked during the class. Um, These cues that we're giving people to drop down into their bodies, to release their tensions, to to just sink and surrender um, into the movement, to to not judge, to not get caught up in competitive thoughts or in, in the mentality aspect, to try to get people to soothe down and quiet down in the mind. It was so interesting to me that a student said, I've never heard anyone talk like that before or you know, have that same type of narrative because it isn't common that we have anybody in our lives kind of helping us to breathe and relax and let go unless you're seeing a psychologist or a therapist or if you have a a spiritual teacher at your specific um, church or synagogue or institution where you seek spiritual guidance, um, you might not have might not have someone in your life to kind of help encourage you to have those tools for personal and and spiritual growth. So that is a really important role that the yoga teacher plays. Um, And it's key, I think. Definitely, definitely. That's the key. That's why we are, the, the responsibility of the yoga teacher is to transmit all these things. And 
what you said is a, it's kind of a pity that a students, uh, like you said, no, your experience, this student never had the 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 chance to to get these uh, these cues, no, or these tips about uh, the philosophy or the spiritual. Uh, things that you were serving with them. And I think it's because you, you were also uh, learning all these things here in India. That's why I think uh, um, to transmit this vibes, this energy, this uh, spiritual uh, practice, uh, you have to experience it. Because if this is yoga, what are you going to teach if you don't experience first? Teachers who are just uh, taught in a TTC about alignment, anatomy, or uh, asana, this is what they are going to transmit. They, but if they miss the spiritual and the philosophical uh, aspect, it's not their fault. They have not been taught like that. But I think, uh, yeah, they they should. If they are in front of a student as a role of a teacher, they should go deeper and deeper in in this practice. And uh, yeah, uh, I also, we also had a few students now. We are doing some online classes with a Swami. And uh, they told us like, oh, if I would uh, have known these classes before, I never uh, would have this uh, with my psychology, this uh, session. So they are uh, learning so much about themselves. Yoga itself is an incredible tool to to know about ourselves, our weakness, our strengths, how to manage our mind, uh, our ego. So I think it's uh, perfect to balance our life. I couldn't agree more. I really c- couldn't agree more. Uh, I think something so valuable that yoga has taught me personally is about discomfort, um, being okay, being uncomfortable. That translates not just on the mat, of course, but off of it. When things are a little uncomfortable, how to just breathe into that and not resist that so much because when you're resisting it, it's fighting you right back. It's making it more uncomfortable and making it worse. And so if you can just relax and breathe into it, you can surrender, let go, you know, embrace that asana and and find your edge or embrace a conversation or embrace an awkward moment or whatever's happening in your life. Um, so that's a really important lesson I feel yoga has taught me. So I wanted to ask you, Almudena, what is an important lesson that yoga has taught you? Uh, at the end, uh, I could not say that yoga, what yoga has taught me is uh, to be flexible or, or to do uh, an inversion or something like this. That uh, at the end is nothing. If I compare how I'm uh, growing and improving myself, uh, I also feel like yoga has uh, given me this opportunity to 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 become, an, uh, what is important, and as you said, also to become an observer, a witness of my my thoughts, my emotions, uh, to know, think that I'm part of them. Uh, is uh, It has taught me to differentiate this ego from my true self. I'm beyond all these thoughts, my emotions, everything. So it's a... Uh, it's, uh, it's been an important tool for me and the mean to realize uh, that we are not individuals. Uh, so we have this connection with the divine, with something else, as you said, not to surrender to it, to not force something, a situation or uh, something that we want and then uh, and we are forcing it to, to happen. This is, we have to see it's our ego which uh, wants these things to happen in our lives. No, we have to just let us go or let us happen, whatever it has to happen, and always think that it's because of something else, something better is uh, going to happen to ourselves. And this this connection with our inner self, with the divine, no? with something superior to us, that uh, we are all one, we, we are part of... Uh, something bigger no we cannot think that we are uh, this is what also uh, in society or a school or uh, education is teaching us uh, nowadays to to compete uh, among others to think that uh, we can do whatever we want at the end it's not everything uh, anything on our hands is we we are playing roles and uh, 
we have to see this, no? become an observer, a witness, and accept. Acceptance is also important. And this is what yoga is teaching me. Uh, and uh, I'm very grateful to, to, to be able to see now this reality. So I cannot say that uh, yoga is just to reach uh, sirsasana or something like this. It's beyond all this. It is beyond that. And I thought it was really impactful, Almudena, when you said doing an inversion is nothing. Like you said it so with so much in heart, <laughs> with so much like authentic expression, like just doing an inversion is nothing. It is not the goal. And having the ego in your practice, especially if you're in a classroom and you're looking around the room and you're struggling, just like in your very first class when you said the woman next to you could do everything and you felt pain in every, in every posture, it's that, that ego and getting to kind of to, just to watch it and observe it and get to know it better and then to acknowledge like, okay, this is not serving me this comparison that it doesn't do anything and then pushing your body harder and harder to, to get into an inversion or sursasana or any asana really. It's just, it's useless. Uh, I thought you said that really well. Um, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, but it's something that you, we also realize with time and practice at the beginning, we are all obsessed to reach and do this, this, this split uh, flexibility or, but uh, once you transcend this physical part and uh, you want to go deeper and deeper at the end, you look back and you said, wow, but that is nothing. No. So there is much more to know about uh, ourselves and, and now we can see that it's uh, it's more relevant in our daily life than uh, uh, just to do uh, any asana. So. Yes. So would you mind, Almudena, defining yoga for me? Yeah, sure. For me, for me, as I said also, uh, it's uh, the, the tool or the mean to connect uh, our inner self with uh, with something superior, with this superior consciousness, and uh, we have different paths to reach to to this uh, to this aim of yoga. Uh, it's not only the physical uh, uh, aspect, which is also there in Raja Yoga, but um, we have to go deeper in uh, in the service in Karma Yoga when we service and we do things. Uh, for others, uh, how we feel, how rewarding is this, uh, this uh, act, you know, these actions. Or in Bhakti Yoga, when you are connecting yourself with the divine, with something bigger than you, superior than you. Or in uh, Jnana Yoga, which is uh, keep learning and studying uh, because it's huge, the knowledge. When you combine all these things, when you realize that uh, it's uh, you have to go to, through all these four paths, then uh, you will see how your personal and spiritual growth uh, is uh, improving and you are reaching this goal of, uh, of yoga, which Patan- Patanjali said. Uh, and, uh, yeah, as I also said, for me, it's... Uh, to realize that we are not independent individuals. We are part of the whole existence. We have to see that we are not better than others or uh, my thoughts are not better than you. At the end, you have to see that we are all one and we are all connected. And uh, if you see this connection about among everything, about among all the people uh, that are coming to your life, then... Uh, your ego will be coming less and less and less and less. And then this is what we have to work on. So, yeah, that could be my definition of, of yoga. Beautiful. So if somebody wants to um, you know, join you for a retreat or has anything that they would like to ask you, um, what is a good way for them to reach out? Oh, we are... Uh, we are in Instagram. Uh, if they want to join uh, to join uh, with us to any course, workshop, online or offline, when everything is uh, getting better, and in the open border, they can uh, reach us in Instagram in yogacolidays.es or uh, in uh, the website uh, yogacolidays 
also.es. And uh, this is yeah, for our uh, upcoming courses, workshops, TTCs, everything. It's a, it's a platform. We created this platform specifically for a Spanish community because in Spain still we have this uh, barrier of the language. Many people, most of them, they, they cannot uh, do uh, all this uh, workshop or TTC that we we are doing with local uh, teacher from India. So we are offering them the, the opportunity, the chance to have a, um, the, the direct contact with a local teacher with a translation in, in Spanish. So anyone who is interested, they can contact us through, through these uh, platforms. Sounds good. And so Almudena, I know you also have a small company called Malaguru. I would love to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah, that is uh, is something that uh, a friend of mine and uh, who is also translator in our uh, courses here in India. Um, We started at the beginning uh, last year, one year ago, when everything started, the situations and uh, we wanted to sh- uh, keep uh, transmitting the energy of uh, Rishikesh, Ganga, transmitting the, the, the importance of the meditation through the malas that we, we started uh, uh, offering and selling uh, online in our uh, web, malaguru.es. And uh, little by little, uh, as uh, demanding of our uh, Customers and uh, clients, we have uh, expanded our products in uh, different uh, different uh, themes, not related to yoga and meditation, like uh, singing bowls. And uh, they were asking for uh, deities uh, statues for their yoga hall or their small temple or altar at home. Uh, different different things that uh, uh, we wanted to 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 share with. Uh, with everyone now that they cannot come to India, at least they can have this opportunity. All our malas and our products are blessed uh, here with uh, in deep in, uh, in Ganga with uh, mantra rituals also. So they have a special energy and uh, I think uh, uh, everyone who, who got them, they are feeling same and very, very happy with with us and, and this uh, opportunity that we are giving them to have uh, in their home this kind of uh, of things. Wonderful. And so is it an international online shop so you could ship anywhere in the world or are you only shipping in Europe? Uh, yeah, we are ready to ship uh, everywhere around the world. So anything, uh, they can contact us also in Instagram mm, and uh, or through the website. Uh, if uh, someone is also interested in a, a specific product here in India or in Rishikesh, we would be very happy to provide with whatever they need. <laughs> Wonderful. That's so awesome. I'm glad you've started that and I'm glad it's going so well and that you're blessing them and doing mantras on all the products. I do agree that there is such a special energy in Rishikesh and by doing the ceremonies and by dipping it in the Ganga River, it's that's just I love that you're doing that, Almudena. That that intention is beautiful. Yeah, we wanted to give the special uh, a plus, no a special treatment for our uh, customers, and I think uh, for them is is very special when we say that they are blessed in Ganga with the energy of uh, Rishikesh, with this process of in temple uh, with a priest doing this ritual of mantras. I think it's something that um, you cannot find everywhere and we are more than happy to do it because we really believe on this and on the energy that you can feel here next to Gangaji. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Almudena, for joining me today um, on the Wild Yoga Tribe podcast. It has been such a delight to learn more about you and your yoga journey and all of the amazing offerings you're doing now with Yoga Holidays, Punya Yoga, and with uh, Mala Guru. So thank you so much for sharing your story with us. 
Thank you, Lily. Thank you for this time and for letting me share all these things with, with you and your followers. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Wild Yoga Tribe podcast. This week, we've had yoga teacher Almudena Laborda Galindo from Spain. I hope you enjoyed this conversation um, that I thought just covered so many interesting topics, talking about how the asana may be the most attractive element of yoga, but it's not the point of yoga, talking about the purpose of yoga to, to seek and search for self-inquiry, the who am I and the what is my purpose, and even the role of a yoga teacher, you know, to go deeper and deeper into the practice of yoga itself and to get to know all the tools that yoga offers. So I hope that there has been some things in this conversation that have sparked something in you, whether it has been a question or something you're excited to learn more about. I hope you have found this episode and this conversation as enlightening and delightful as I have. So let me know in the comments or get in touch on social media. I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you and be well. Feel like getting social? Connect with me and the Wild Yoga Tribe on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Head on over to thewildyogatribe.com to tap into some pretty awesome resources. Meditate with me on Insight Timer, a free app on Apple and Android devices, and join me for a yoga class on YouTube. Jazz up your week and get a bit of yoga in your life. Remember to hit subscribe so that you never miss an episode. And if you feel called, please share this episode with someone that you think could benefit from it. Leaving a review would also be so appreciated. Thank you again, dear listener, for being with me. May your day be light and bright. May you be peaceful and happy and led on the right path, free of suffering and free of sorrow. Be well, dear one. Be well. Be well.